Fancy Smack Talk, Nanko over here, Dustin right here. Are Fantasy you kidding me? Week three, let's talk about the trade. What a, what, what a schmuck organization the Browns are. Really, you're gonna deal Trent Richardson for probably the 20th, maybe at best the 17th overall pick. I mean, if for those that don't know, Trent was traded from the Browns to the Colts. Colts fans are going crazy everywhere. Browns fans, they gotta be wanting to hang themselves. Come one buddy, he can't kill himself, so that's good. Here's the thing, fantasy-wise, obviously huge, huge upgrade for Trent Richardson on a much more prolific offense. Andrew Luck's going to, it, the fact that Andrew Luck can actually throw the ball is going to open up running lanes for Trent. I think his yards per carries go up. I think his catches go up. He's going to get more goal lines, score more touchdowns. If we were to drop today, I think he's a top five pick. So if you own him, great for you. If you're on the Browns flip of the side of it, who you should be picking up, probably Willis McGahee as, we, as we're shooting this. He's getting a physical. So I think they're going to end up signing him and he's going to be like a okay kind of guy. Deeper leagues though, he should certainly be owned. Go ahead. I snagged him in every league I possibly could. Out there, the Browns do this to us what two weeks into this trade. Game. Terrible trade. They're just punning. It's it's pathetic, my Andy Marlin style. All right, let's ask some forum questions. The first one comes from a lot with the hands today. I know because I'm going to get comments. Comes from my bah, What a crazy trip. It's from JC314. Wants to know which quarterback he should be starting. That's either Cam Newton versus the Giants or Andrew Luck with his new running back at the San Francisco 49ers. 87% of the community is saying you gotta go with Cam, even though he's been struggling. This one is really hard because obviously Luck's been playing better, but he's got the tougher matchup, and he's on the road with that tougher matchup. You know, the Giants games just seem to be turning into high scoring affairs. The Giants are just giving up so many points. I just think it's just a little too scary to start uh, Luck this week at San Francisco. I think Cam's just a little bit safer. 87% of the community agrees. I'm sticking Newton. Next one comes from Hi. Which wide receiver? Edelman versus Tampa Bay or <laughs> Royal at Tennessee? Very close one, but right now 54% is saying Edelman. Yeah, and I'm taking kind of the cop out with this. I'm saying in a PPR league, got to go with Edelman. For you guys that have been watching the video, I'm a huge fan of targets and Edelman ever since Amendola went down. Brady targeted him a ton of times in the last game. He'll continue to do so. I think he's going to rack up the catches. But. Eddie Royals got five touchdowns, you know, leading the league. You should be trading for Megatron, obviously. So, but again, if you're in, with Floyd going to be out, I think if you're in standard scoring, I think he actually probably might have a better chance of finding the end zone. So in standard league, go ahead, go with Royal, but PPR, definitely Edelman. All right, Dustin, the next one comes from MD Lynn DC. Wants to know, that's a, you thought I was going to butcher that. Wants to know which running back he should start, either Matthews at Tennessee or MJD at the Seattle Seahawks. Yeah, and right now, right now on the homepage, it's pretty heavily favored towards uh, Matthews right now. And I think I have to agree. I mean, you know, I understand why you're thinking about this one because, you know, you probably drafted MJD before Matthews. So, you know, he's supposed to be kind of your stud. But I wouldn't be surprised if Seattle holds the Jaguars to under 200 yards total offense. I mean, <laughs> they they can't do anything. You know, the only yards that they've been getting has been in junk, in junk time at the end of the games where they're just throwing it to Cecil at the end of the game. But I'm not looking forward to starting anyone for the Jaguars this week. I think it's oh, going to be ugly. Looking forward to that. I think it's going to be ugly. So for that reason, stick with Matthews. I think he's the, the safer out of the two. Let's get into our dud sleepers and deep sleepers. We'll start with mine. My dud is going to be Josh Gordon. You know, I know this is his first week back. You know, people drafted him. You know, they're excited about him. Uh, you know, that new offense. It, you know, it's going to be a little bit more pass happy, blah, blah, blah. But here's Without the, Trent Richardson. Here's Great job, issue. Browns! Here's the, the issue. Trade. Whedon's hurt. Richardson's gone. You know, not the worst matchup in the world against Minnesota, but I, I'm waiting at least one week to see what this guy can do before I'm putting him in my lineup over anyone decent. Then my sleeper is actually Minnesota's defense for, for reasons that I just said. I really like them. They're at home this week. The Browns have hardly anyone left. So <laughs> I, I like their upside this week. And my deep sleeper is Chris Givens at Dallas. You know, it, it's, a, it's a decent matchup for him. He's coming off of a 100-yard game last week. And I think uh, he's just going to continue to have success this year. And I think it's start, starting to be that time to maybe start sticking him in your lineups, especially in deeper leagues. All right, my bust is going to be Cecil Shorts against that uh, Seattle defense, and specifically Richard Sherman. 
he's just gonna lock him down. I know if you had shorts, he ended up having a fairly good game last week, and like Dust said, it was in garbage time. It's gonna be shut down. I don't see Seattle scoring anymore. I think they've only scored like three and two points. I mean, they're terrible. Uh, sleeper, and right now it's gonna. Side note, I kind of like Fleener now. That Allen's throwing another play. guy in. Just, just throw it in there. I kind of like Kobe Fleener. If you're in deeper leagues, you can pick him up. He's with Trent there. He's going to open things up. I really like Fleener. But the guy that I'm going to pick is Tompkins this week for the New England Patriots. And here's why. Again, I'm a big target guy. So far, Tompkins had 21 targets. That is one more than Brandon Marshall and the same as Des Bryant's had so far. So clearly, he's not catching too many of them, but Brady's throwing them that way. And, you know, Gronk's 50-50 to play. I don't think he's actually going to play. So it should be another week that he's going to get heavily a lot of targets. And then my deep sleeper is Nate Burleson against the Washington Redskins. Pretty They're easy. Terrible. They are just god-awful. And, by the way, D'Angelo Hall is probably the worst corner in the NFL. All he does is just run behind people. He'll be running behind Megatron. <laughs> They're going to have extra help on Megatron, maybe three people. Nate's just going to be wide open. I think in a deep, deep lead, deep sleeper play, love Nate Burleson. Let's get into Mike's picks. His dud is Roddy White. He just hasn't been himself this year. Roddy. You know, Roddy will get there. He will be back. But, but but Mike's not trusting him this week. Going up against the Dolphins. Decent pass D with them so far. His sleeper is Charles Clay. Actually pretty excited about this guy. You know, I talked to I had him on my waiver wire right up this week. He's had a goal line carry last week for them and, and got in the end zone. You know, obviously that's an interesting thing for your tight end. It doesn't happen very often, and it shows a level of confidence for the Dolphins as far as putting the ball in his hand in that situation. So Clay is a very interesting tight end this week. He likes Clay going up against Atlanta. They'll probably be playing from behind. And his deep sleeper is Andre Ellington. They're going up against the Saints this week. You know, he's the backup running back for the Cardinals. And there's been some reports out right now that Mendenhall is even now iffy for, for week three. So Shocker. It makes... Uh, Ellington even more of an interesting guy. There's probably a good chance he might even still be available in your league. So if he is, pick him up at the very least and maybe Lock start him in, in deep. Not not available in too many leagues that I'm in. Well, it's because you I, picked him up. Yeah, that's what I mean. I scooped him up. So. I'm sure he's available in plenty <laughs> of leagues out there. He's still available in a lot of leagues. But that is our week three fantasy fix. Get into those forms if you got any questions. Name goes over here. Oh, you already have pen. I was going to give you one for pen flip. Go ahead. You do it. Damn it.